Hi, it's Mark from Microsoft. And again, uh, with me in the studio, I have Jackie. Welcome, Jackie. Thank you. Good morning, Queen Morik and Johnny Sabona. Just to make you happy, welcome everybody. Thanks, Back Jack. to the training. Still, <laughs> still, still, still learning all my greetings. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we have, uh, we, we've obviously shown two lessons on, on some Excel tips and tricks. Today's our third lesson, and hopefully one of these will, will be beneficial in the Excel champs that we're busy running. And Jackie, we were talking earlier in the studio. I often have a challenge when it comes to Excel. I, I, like within my job, I need to use possibly exchange rate, margin, markup, et cetera, et cetera. And when I need to reference these individual cells within my rows of data, my, my formulas either spiral, the values mm. are, spiral out of control, wrong, or, yeah. or I get a hash value error. What, how, can I, how can I make it easier for myself to prevent these kind of errors from happening? Okay, that's very easy, and that can be done with what we call the absolute cell address. Now absolute? The, Absolute cell address. Absolute cell address, okay. okay. That's when you lock your formula onto looking at a specific cell. You will absolutely not move from that cell because the problem comes in when you create your formula, it copies it down and it keeps the distance the same because that's how a formula works. It's relative. No, because what I do is I create my formula once and then for time saving, I either drag and drop or I exactly. double click in the bottom right hand corner, goes all the way to the bottom, but then I, I spend the next 20 minutes fixing Try my to formula. to fix it, exactly. Yes. The whole reason for using Excel and creating formulas is not for you to use a calculator, it's to be able to copy the data down at one click of a button. So you're going to show me how to do it? Yes, we are. Here we Thank go. Thank you. Okay. Over to Jackie. Thank you. All right, so what you do is you make sure your cursor is obviously where you want the formula to be. And you'll see we have a VAT column. And there is a VAT cell with 14%. Now, why would I put it in one cell? It's like your random exchange rate. It changes not once a day, a thousand times a day. So when a, a value is variable, when it changes constantly, you get your formula to look at that cell, so you're only changing in your formula one specific cell. So all the formulas in column F under the VAT column would be referenced to that one single cell in B3. So I'm, I need to, like, let's say for example, uh, next year Praveen Gordon says, yes, listen, VAT is increasing from 16, per, or to increasing 40. to 16, or decreasing to, I just update one cell Correct. and my formulas update. Correct, you don't have to go and edit every single cell. Okay. okay, so obviously now we're going to create the formula that looks at that amount. So instead of saying times 14%, you actually tell it to look at that cell B3. Now when I press enter, and the, obviously the whole reason for using a formula is to be able to copy it down, the minute I copy it down, I get hash value errors. So that, uh, that looks like the errors I get. Yes, okay, why? Because what happens is you've created one formula, which says E6 times B3. They are relative. So when you copy it down, it keeps the distance the same. So E6 becomes E7 and B3 becomes B4. And you don't want it to become B4, you want it to stay looking at B3. If you look at the next cell, it's also now gone down one to B5, which happens to be text. Therefore, you're getting a hash value. The cell referred to is not a value. Okay. So what we need to do is fix that first formula in order to be able to copy it down. You need to tell every single cell to multiply by B3. And that's when you put in the dollar sign. So what you do is you click at the end of the cell address you want to lock. You want to say you will absolutely not move from that cell. And you do that with a built-in key called the absolute cell address F4. When you press F4, it gives you the dollar signs. So when it says dollar B dollar three, it's not the rand dollar, it is the dollar sign in a formula. So basically it's kept cell B and kept cell three as constant. Correct. No matter what I do, stand, headstand, whatever, nothing's gonna Correct. change, it'll always be that cell. Correct, because there's a dollar before the B, it says keep looking at dollar, uh, column B, keep looking at row three. So we press enter, the answer hasn't changed, it still says 126, but when you use it to copy it down, you'll see one double click, by the way, that's a shortcut, will allow you to copy your formulas the entire column down, and it goes to E7 because that was relative, but still times B3. The next formula will go to E8, but still times B3. So each row that it will look at, what is E, becomes E7, E8, E9, it keeps that distance the same, but B3 stays looking at B3 even if I copy it a million rows down. So Jackie, this has been pretty insightful again. Mm -hmm. I'd imagine if I if I kept the dollar sign just in front of B and not in, in front of the, 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 the three. three, and likewise, if I didn't put the dollar sign in front of the B, but I put the dollar sign inside of the in, in front of the three, those would also keep certain column cells um, uh, uh, constant. But for more information, where would I have to come? To Legit Smart Solutions to learn more about absolute cell addresses.
Okay, thank so much. thank you, Jackie. Yeah. I think uh, as we as we get deeper and deeper into the Excel champs, hopefully some of these uh, uh, tips and tricks and some of these short little lessons from Jackie are going to give you some uh, guidance and help you to smash that time so you could be South Africa's next Excel champ and possibly an Excel world champ. For my, myself at Microsoft, <laughs> Mark. And Jackie, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you.